At some point, I think that Apple just has to be trolling because the very few things that made them good, even in my eyes, are starting to fade away. So some of the things that I thought made Apple good back in the day were that even if you did not get the best value for your dollar, anytime you were purchasing an Apple product, there was some level of taste. So when I say taste, I mean that it wasn't necessarily completely imbalanced. So there were these $2,000 laptops that you could buy 10 years ago where you'd still be getting a 1366 by 768 TN panel that looked awful. Whereas you could buy a $2,000 MacBook Pro, even if it was the A1150 model 13 years ago, you got good resolution, it had good color gamut and everything for the time, and it was pretty good, it was pretty decent. Or when it comes to battery life, you could buy a lot of PCs, again, even in that $1,200 to $2,000 range and get garbage battery life, but with Apple, even if you were buying the lowliest A1181, you typically got better battery life than not every PC, but 90% of the other PCs even in the same price range at the time. Not only is everybody going to have an SSD, we're going to put a PCI Express solid state drive in every single one of these machines. In 2012, they decided even if you're buying the lowest model pro that we have, that is our new model, we are going to have a very high resolution, amazing looking screen in there. And unlike the Windows machines at the time or the Linux operating systems, the scaling in OS 10 is going to be immaculate. So you're going to have this ridiculously high resolution, high quality screen, and the operating system is actually going to be able to support it. I respect the fact that Apple has done these things that were in good taste and there's always been a kind of balance even if you're not the best in one area it's good enough in all these areas that you know you're not going to have a garbage experience with it that is unless the hardware dies but I've left that for many other videos. So, you know, when you buy this Apple product, you know that there is some basic element of taste where they are making the decisions for you, but they are often good decisions that are pushing technology and progress forward in a way that I think they should. I don't want the most expensive PC to come with a 1366 by 768 screen. I don't want the most expensive devices to have by default a 5400 RPM or drive. I think an SSD should be the default. And I like the fact that good battery life is something valued. I like that they're always kind of pushing the envelope to move things forward. So it makes me sick to my stomach when I see that some of the very few things that even I can admit Apple deserves credit and respect for are being completely eradicated from their products. So if you take a look at the new iMac lineup, you'll see that this is a complete and utter joke. This is the latest refresh of the new iMacs. And you could spend $1,300 on an iMac. You could spend $1,300 on one of their desktop machines, and you still get a 5400 RPM spinning hard drive. Now, there are many people that say that the average person is not going to notice the difference between a hard drive and an SSD. And that's what I call BS. Even if you are, you barely use the machine for anything, all you do is open up a web browser. You may not notice the difference between a dual core or an octa-core processor. You'll notice the difference between a 5400 RPM drive and even the cheapest, crappiest SSD. You may not notice the difference between 8 gigabytes and 64 gigabytes of memory. You're going to notice the difference between a 5400 RPM drive and an SSD. You may not notice the difference between a low gigahertz i3 and a high gigahertz i9, but you will notice the difference between that. Just the amount of time it takes to open up a session that has a bunch of files scattered all over the place in different parts of the drive, you will notice that difference. Just the time it takes to open up any program that is loaded on that drive, you will notice a large difference. This is an element of taste that Apple decided on over six years ago that I agree with, by the way, that should be a standard in all of these high-end machines where you're selling to the high-end marketplace. One of the things that Steve Jobs said over 10 years ago was, you'll see these really cheap products, and yeah, they may have a little bit of a better spec here, or they, you may save money here, but they don't want to compete on that low level. They would rather just create products that are good, even if it costs a little bit more money, rather than lowering themselves to compete with stuff that has a user experience that's trash. And that's one of the very few areas where I can actually agree and respect Steve Jobs for thinking that. And here you have the worst of both worlds. You have a machine that is $1,300, so it is expensive. It is fairly proprietary in nature, and you're also getting a 5400 RPM drive. What really makes this absolutely disgusting beyond everything else is that the screen is glued into the computer. So unlike many other machines where you can simply unscrew a compartment on the back, unplug that garbage 5400 RPM drive, throw it like a Frisbee, like a, like a chip, should be and put in a proper SSD on this machine, you have to risk breaking the screen, which is about half the worth of the machine. Go on eBay or Amazon, see what these screens for the new iMacs are worth dollar-wise. You have to risk breaking apart. That costs half what the machine costs. And then after that, replace the drive yourself and then put it back in with special adhesive. If you use the wrong type of adhesive, the screen will fall out and that four to $700 part is now cracked and useless. It's not a good do-it-yourself repair, in my opinion, because at least with my employees, 
typically the first time anybody ever does this, they wind up breaking the screen. You may be better, but I'm just saying the average person that is not very savvy with repairs and adhesive and going around this type of stuff, they are likely going to break their screen the first time that they do this. And that is not a cheap screen. That is a screen that costs half as much as the computer. And this is sad. I have criticized Apple for the A1278 MacBook. The A1278 MacBook from 2012 was a machine that for several years had the exact same specifications. This was an i5 laptop. It came with four gigabytes of RAM, a 500 gigabyte, 5400 RPM, drive, a 1280 by 800 screen, and this thing sold for $1,050 for about four years in a row. So 2012, still $1,049. 2013, same price, 14, same price, 15, same price. Even in 2016, four and a half years after this thing came out, i5, four gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabyte, 5400 RPM drive, 1280 by 800 screen resolution. That's half that of your average Android phone at the time. And it still sold for $1,049. Even with all the criticism I may have of that, at the very least, it was easy to open it and undo Apple's curmudgeonness of just not updating or refreshing it. Even with the Mac Pro, you know, they had that machine from 2013. Four years later, their professional line machine, same specs, same price. But this, this is just the biggest slap in the face, the most disgusting practice of complete disrespect that you can show your customers because not only are you giving them garbage hardware, but you're making it so that when they try to open the machine to replace that garbage hardware, they are then going to break it. And if we take a look at other machines in the market, even companies like Dell have caught up. Even if you buy a Dell all-in-one, this Dell all-in-one will show up with for $1,000 with an M2 128 gigabyte solid state drive. Even the Lenovo Idea Center, you can buy a Lenovo Idea Center, this thing is $769 and you can still buy this thing with an SSD. It'll show up with this PCI Express SSD and a one terabyte drive for storage. And that thing costs four or $500 less than the iMac. Even companies that people that uh, follow Apple will say have no taste in regards to these things have better taste than Apple when it comes to this basic element of the user experience that hard drives as an operating system drive in 2019 offer a very obsolete, slow, delayed, and awful user experience. And people will say, well, you can buy the model that's one up, but typically the models that arrive with a solid state drive are the models that are custom build to order and the average individual again the average Joe that Apple is going for the person that's not customizing and building their own stuff but just wants to buy a machine that just works that just shows up out of the box and does what they want are likely going to walk into a Best Buy or going to walk into the store and just buy the one that's on the shelf there and that's going to be the one that comes with this garbage awful 5400 RPM drive and when they try to replace that drive themselves rather than being able to unscrew a little panel on the back of the machine they're going to have to remove a screen that they're likely going to break. When they go to the local repair shop to have them do it, again, if it's a place like us, maybe we can do it. If it's a place in the middle of nowhere, they're going to go, okay, we haven't opened something like this, so we're going to be charging you a rate to replace the drive that covers the risk of us potentially breaking this ridiculously expensive screen that we've never removed before. That sucks. That's awful. Even to the very basic elements that make Apple a good company, even by my standards, my very, very biased anti-Apple standards, the few things I can say that they do correctly, they are actively destroying. This is an abomination. This is effing disgusting. And I sincerely hope that they change this before people start buying it for their sake, because people who buy this and go, damn, for $1,300, my computer's running worse. It feels worse than a $600 PC. That's going to matter to them. People don't buy the Mac because of the specifications. They don't buy it because it's cheap. They don't buy it comparing specs. They just buy it and it does what they want it to be done. They don't get viruses. It works well for them. That's why they buy it. Once you start making the user experience on a Mac worse than the user experience on a PC, then you're going to get even those low-level individuals when it comes to technology that don't read through spec sheets, that don't compare stuff, that don't care about all of that, to start caring about that. And once they do, you're never going to get those individuals back. You're never going to get somebody back when they have a better user experience on the $700 product than they do on your $1,300 product. Don't give your users an incentive to start reading and caring about spec sheets and benchmarks and gigahertz and throughput and I.O. and I.O. OPS and all that stuff, because if you do, that's a big problem. I know you're always focused on your bottom line. I know you're focused on wringing every last penny you can out of the people that buy your products, but I'm telling you, this is going to screw you in the future. 5,400 RPM drive and a $1,300 machine, you should be effing ashamed of yourself.